Victorian times, prostitution was seen as one of the biggest social evils that plagued society, and the character of the fallen woman has become an iconic image of the 19th century. And indeed, the fallen woman embodied all of the characteristics that respectable Victorian women were taught to avoid. Now, the term fallen woman might imply that these prostitutes just ended up in their situation, but more often than not, these women were pushed. Most of the women who were prostitutes came from some of the poorest areas of society and had fuel tools such as education or good job prospects to get them out of poverty. The other professions that were available to them, such as factory work, could often be extremely dangerous, exhausting and poorly paid, so it's easy to understand why some of them chose to become prostitutes. Aside from full-time streetwalkers, there are also casual prostitutes who would use prostitution to supplement their income. And this was often done in the knowledge and blessing of their husbands. Some historians argue that the number of casual prostitutes actually exceeds that of their full-time counterparts, which just goes to show how few options these women must have had available to them. Whilst the demand for prostitutes generally came from upper and middle class men, the supply was exclusively working class girls. But Henry Mayhew, who published his investigation into London prostitution in 1861, argued that there were three classes of prostitute. The lowest class of prostitute would walk the streets and use a brothel to meet their clients. The middle class prostitutes would have their own apartments and would operate their business from there. And the highest class of prostitute would be independent and financially supported by one client. Mayhew insisted that you could tell the class of a prostitute by what they wore and where they operated, but as we can see with the case of casual prostitutes, the reality would not have fit so neatly into these categories. Prostitution was justified, and sometimes even encouraged by certain members of society, due to the fact that men were thought to need an outlet for their seemingly endless sexual energies. Prostitution was seen as the solution to this problem, and some even argued that they shielded respectable young women from the unwanted sexual advances of men. But even those who saw prostitution as necessary would often blame the prostitutes for the spread of vice and the enticement of young men into sexual deviancy. And one prime example of this was the 1864 Contagious Diseases Act, which allowed the enforced inspection of prostitutes if they were suspected of having venereal disease. This act was introduced because venereal disease was leaving so many naval and military men unfit for combat. Originally, the act was enforced in 11 towns that were near to military or naval bases, but by the end of 1869, this number would be extended to 18. Any working class woman who was suspected of being a prostitute could be brought in and forcefully inspected, and many of the women who were inspected weren't prostitutes at all. Those who resisted these brutal internal examinations would often be strapped down, sometimes for days until they complied, and if they were found to have venereal disease, they would be hospitalised and forcefully confined until treatment was completed. Victorian feminists campaigned relentlessly against this act, as it was only the prostitutes who were examined and not the men who bought them, who would inevitably pass the disease on to their wives. In this case, it is the fault of the prostitute that the servicemen are unfit for combat, and the men who buy them are left completely blameless. In fact, one of the few times that it was seen to be unacceptable to purchase a prostitute was when they began appearing on the arms of wealthy men in high Victorian society. The fact that these prostitutes could appear in public and supposedly pass for middle or upper class ladies was seen as outrageous. And this matter was even further confused by the fast daughters of the middle class who lived for fun and luxury, and were sometimes mistaken for prostitutes due to their more risque attitudes. Policemen would often clear the pavements of prostitutes to make way for respectable young women, but sometimes they'd clear away the wrong people and leave some ladies feeling very offended. Prostitution could only be justified as a necessity when the prostitute and the virtuous Victorian woman existed on opposite ends of the spectrum of womanhood, and it was the blurring of these lines that made the Victorians look upon prostitution as one of the most threatening and dangerous social problems that they would face. Thanks for watching! If you missed last week's episode, you can always catch up on it now, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time!